Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. And unfortunately, I didn't get to spend as much time preparing for this as I wanted. The past week has been super busy uh, getting our Filecoin API actually launched. And if you saw in the announcements in the Filecoin Slack today or in our blog or our social media, it is actually live today, not soon to be live. And so um, I have prepared a quick demo just to show you guys kind of how it works, how you can sign up, how you can get access to it, and just some really basic usage of it. And then we're super excited to see what sort of apps you guys come up with that you can build using this. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Infura, um, if you're newer to the ecosystem, or if you just haven't been doing as much stuff with Ethereum uh, or IPFS, Infura has been around for, I think, a little over five years now. Uh, as a way to interact with the Ethereum blockchain that makes it really simple for developers. So um, it's pretty well known that running Ethereum nodes can be difficult. It requires a lot of storage. Uh, keeping it synced all the time is hard. It's got to always be running. It's just kind of a pain if all you want to do is like run some queries against the blockchain. And so Infura has provided an endpoint that lets you just directly access that data without having to do all of that operations yourself. And so we launched with support for Ethereum. And then I think about three years ago, we added support for IVFS as well. Uh, and since then, those have been the only two protocols that we've supported. Uh, but today we are launching our file system network API. So uh, if you've used Infura before, the same way that you're able to access Ethereum and IPFS, you'll now be able to do that for Filecoin as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to show you how to uh, sign up and get access to the Filecoin API, and then I'll show you some examples of using it really quickly. So uh, infira.io is our website. Uh, many of you may have an account already, but if you don't, super easy to get one. Uh, we have a very short form for signing up. Um, I'm just going to create a new account here. Sign up. And then off screen, I'm just going to be waiting a second for that email and accepting it. Here we go. Uh, and so now if you go to the Infura dashboard, previously where you would have just seen Ethereum, you will now see Filecoin. Uh, and if you come here, you see some information uh, about Filecoin, about our network API, some links to documentation, various things. Uh, but if you wanna get started, uh, you can just click this button to join the waitlist. And we're just doing this to kind of um, ease ourselves into supporting this and make sure that we don't overwhelm our API right away. Um, but so far we've been letting in people in pretty quickly, um, but I have another account I'm gonna sign into uh, that's already been approved. So I can show you guys what that looks like. Great, so once you have been approved to the waitlist, you will see this screen. And this looks very similar to what the Ethereum dashboard looks like, if you've seen that. Uh, I have a couple of projects already here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually delete this one and recreate it, which I meant to do earlier, but delete this. Uh, and so yeah, once you're here, you can create a new project, give it any name you like. We'll go with Filecoin Liftoff. And then this is the project setting screen. And so this is also very familiar if you've used our Ethereum API before. Uh, and so the only thing that we really care about here are these keys. So these are gonna be the keys that actually let us access the API. Uh, the same as the Ethereum API, you'll have a project ID and a project secret. Uh, the project ID is required. The project secret is optional. Uh, for Ethereum, you can force the secret to be used so that if you're, if you're calling the API from like a, a a backend server, you can make sure that it's an authenticated request and that uh, no one else is using your key. Uh, we will be adding that very soon for Filecoin, but for right now, it doesn't exist. You can either use just the ID or the ID in the secret. Okay. Oh, oops. One other thing I wanted to show from here. So if we go back out to Filecoin, uh, you can either from this docs link here, or this will also take you to it. We have some new docs that we've been working on for Filecoin. You'll see these for Ethereum too. Uh, but they're really nice. They use uh, open API specs for the various APIs. And so they're really rich. You can see all of the methods that are supported, uh, examples, all of the parameters, all sorts of uh, really nice documentation. Um, if we look at, for example, like chain head, we can even like go look at the result and 
I believe some of these have some rich information for the results as well. We're still working at this or on this, but you should be able to see like the fields in there and what exactly what sort of data it's going to return for you. Um, I have a feeling that a lot of people on this call are actually more familiar with this API than I am. I have been working on the infrastructure to run this API, but I am by no means a, an expert on Filecoin or its API. So uh, if anything I'm doing seems silly, just uh, bear with me. But we're gonna do a couple requests here. And I'm just grabbing something off screen at the moment. And so this is just a curl uh, request that I'm doing here, doing a JSON RPC request. And so this is the filecoin.chainhead method. Uh, and I'm just providing my project ID here as the username for basic auth to do this. And then at filecoin.infira.io is the endpoint for our API. And so we'll run this. And of course it did not work because I didn't actually copy my new secret. So let's go grab that. Try that again. Here we go, bunch of data. And this is, I believe it's called a tip set. Um, I could be wrong about that, but it is all the data that gets returned for the chain head. Uh, and this is really hard to see, especially since I've blown it up. So things that are a bit more visible. Uh, so I'm gonna take that JSON that's returned and just grab a parameter out of it. So I'm using a CLI called JQ. I uh, just parses JSON, but it's gonna return. Again, I forgot to replace the key. It's just going to return a field from that response. There we go. So the current height of the chain, it says is 166977. Let's go look at Explorer real quick and see if that agrees. It does. So that's great. Uh, so that's just a really basic uh, request. I'll show you guys one other. Uh, this is tip set by height. So we can then take uh, that same block height 166977 and use it in another request. And I think this really is actually the same information, uh, but just gives you another quick example of the sort of request you can do. Yep, there we go, there's the tip set. And then uh, the last thing I wanna show you, there are also some methods that uh, use WebSockets. And so in addition to the HTTP API, we also support a WebSocket API. So I'm going to use a little utility called WSCAT uh, it's a Node.js utility. I'm running it with NPX, NPX so I don't have to install it. Uh, but the endpoint looks very similar. We'll just, it's, it's now a WebSocket protocol. Our project ID is the user for basic auth, and then filecoin.infira.io. So we'll connect to that. And now we're connected. And so on this WebSocket protocol, we can do the same sort of requests we were doing before. So here's Chainhead, for example. Uh, and we can see that the height has now gone up a little bit. But there's also some other methods that are more interesting over WebSockets. So there's one called filecoin.chain notify, which will actually subscribe us over this WebSocket to get updates about the chain as it progresses. So I'll run that, and it is now actually streaming the blocks to us as they come over this uh, easy to access and important. And we've got a uh, question here uh, from a friend of mine, actually, <laughs> who I had joined. Um, I'll answer it says, uh, can you talk about if there are how rate limits are for the new Filecoin API? Uh, so right now there is just a 10 requests per second rate limit for all users. Um, if you find that that is extremely limiting, definitely reach out to us and we can maybe increase it. Um, the API is free right now while it's in beta. Um, so we don't want to let anyone go too crazy, but if you find it doesn't work for your use cases, definitely let us know and we'll work with you to, to find something that works for you. Um, and as for my demo, that's it. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? All right, uh, another question, do we maintain private keys for signing? Uh, so no, so similar to our Ethereum API, uh, we do not maintain any private keys for users. Um, so there are some methods in Ethereum, for example, to send a transaction where normally it would sign with the private key that it stores that we don't support. So for Ethereum, for example, we instead support a uh, method called send raw transaction, 
where you must sign the transaction with your own private key beforehand, then send it to us and we'll make sure it's forwarded to the network. And I believe there's sort of a similar concept in Filecoin, but again, not being an expert on the API, I can't tell you what that method that we don't support and what its equivalent might be. I'll let the Filecoin team take it back unless there's any other questions.